Good morning, yogis. Thank you for joining me in this time of moving and breathing together. I hope you are all well and your loved ones are well in mind, body, and spirit. And as we get ready to do our yoga practice together this morning, just remember you might have a block, you might have a blanket, you might not. Either way, you'll be able to fully participate. So come to a very comfortable posture, whatever that is in your body this morning. And it could be that you want to lie down, it could be that you want to sit up, whatever works for you. Today's practice is going to be focused a little bit on building stamina. We've been sheltering in place for quite a while now, putting a lot of energy into keeping ourselves and others healthy. And it requires a real focus and some stamina to keep feeling well throughout. So let's move and breathe together in a way that enhances the mind, body, spirit connection and helps us continue to feel strong and healthy. So with all that said, let your eyelids close when you're ready. Let your body root down into the earth. There's so much support for us. We don't always feel it, but it's there. So just touch upon that for a moment. Let your spine lengthen. Let your rib cage lift. And let the tops of your shoulders relax. Let your jaw relax. And relax the little muscles around the eyes as we turn inward, dropping the awareness inward, finding that beautiful paradox of looking deeply inward while we connect. As you inhale, Bring your hands palm to palm in Anjali Mudra in front of your heart. Be aware of your breathing without trying to change it. Just let it be that beautiful, steady pulsation that it is. We come to the mat for ourselves. We come to the mat for each other. And we come to the mat for all living things. Take a moment to set your intention for your practice today. Notice what comes to mind and take a moment to repeat it. And then when you're ready with your complete thought, let your hands come down, keeping your eyes closed. Take one more deep, cleansing breath. Pull your abdominal wall in and just notice the subtlety of how when you pull the core in, the heart opens up. What we're experiencing energetically is courage. When you're ready, softly open your eyes up into the room. If you're seated on a blanket, take a moment to put that to the side of your mat. And we're gonna just gently come through plank. Begin taking a little bit of mountain climber, perhaps. Again, strong arms, strong core. And then what I'd like you to do is come to stillness lift up into downward facing dog and walk your hands back towards your feet forward fold at the back of your mat let your spine uncoil take your hands to your hips and then press into the heels a little bit to come on up to standing we'll come into tadasana mountain pose together so bring your feet comfortably underneath your hips Roll your shoulders back. And maybe do that a couple times. What we're going for here is very comfortably shining the palms forward. Let the weight go back just a little bit into the heels. Pull the energy up right up through the crown of the head. Close your eyes here in mountain pose. Taking the energy of a mountain 
so steady. Let the feet root down into the earth. Hug all the muscles of your legs to the bones of your legs. Pull your abdominal wall in. Take the shoulders back slightly as the palms shine forward. Let the throat be open. Let the crown of the head reach towards the sky. Take a nice deep inhale and then a very complete extended exhale. When that's complete for you, open your eyes and we'll move and breathe together doing sunbursts. Inhale, we lift up high together. Exhale, we bow deeply together. Inhale, we lift up halfway and I'd like you to pause here. Sit back in the heels just a little bit. Lift the tip of the tailbone. Draw the collarbones forward. Lift the crown of the head. Now pull the abdominal wall in as you bow slowly and deeply. Make it complete head towards the earth. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Come on up and exhale, heart center. One more sunburst together. Inhale, we lift up together. Exhale, we dive deep together. Inhale, we lift up halfway, finding that length and strength. Exhale, bow deeply. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Come on up. Exhale, heart center. Now take your feet to the edges of your sticky mat. Again, I'm going to pull back into the heels. Right now, lift and open the toes. Lift the inner arches of your feet. Keep all that upward energy, that prana shakti from our connection to the earth. Pull that up. Set the toes down. Spine is long. Lift the arms up. Urdhva Hastasana. If you feel like your tops of your shoulders are getting closed pinned up, release that down. Let the shoulders feel that descending energy. The heart lifts with each inhale and exhale, release through the shoulders. See if you can take your arms maybe a little straighter, pull back to be in alignment with the ears perhaps. Throat lifts and opens and release slowly. Go nice and slow. Inhale, push down through the feet to rise up through the fingertips. Exhale, swan dive down, staying in the heels. Inhale, lift up halfway, that mini back bend. Exhale, bow. Inhale, reverse swan dive, swing on up. Exhale, come to your heart center. And we're gonna come back into plank pose, so step your feet together. Inhale, lift. Exhale, bow and crab walk down your mat, bringing yourself into plank pose. Now pull the abdominal wall in, stretch the heels back. We're gonna stay here for a while, and at any point, you can feel free to set your knees down. This is a time for strengthening and lengthening, creating stamina, but it's not an endurance contest, so be aware inwardly. If you love doing the mountain climbers, maybe it releases in the calf muscles and the Achilles, go ahead and do that. Either way, stillness or length, try to pull the abdominal wall up, try to stretch the heels back. You might feel your quads engage here, stretching the collarbones forward for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Downward facing dog. Again, if at any point your wrists or your shoulders need a break, please feel free to set the knees down. Otherwise, sink the heels nice and low, press your 10 fingertips into the mat, and feel the strength and length of your arms. You can give your heart a little push back towards your knees. Let the head hang between your biceps for 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Come back out into plank pose. Set the knees down. 
Take your knees nice and wide for child's pose. Set the hips back. So nice and long. Now focus here on your child's pose once you're in it fully. Focus on creating a little space along the sides of the body. So in order to enhance that, you can take your hips back a little bit. It might feel more like an isometric than much of a physical movement, but there's that little nudge back of the hips and that little reach forward with fingertips. Take care with the shoulders. We don't ever need to take our shoulders into a place that's not appropriate for the body. Take one more cleansing breath here. And then you're going to reach the hips back up onto all fours. We're going to come into dolphin together. So forearms on the mat, interlace fingers, toes curl under, lift up again. And walk in, remembering that at any point, you can take yourself out of the pose gently and comfortably. Otherwise, lift the tailbone high, sink the heels low, pull the belly button up, push into the forearms, head hangs between your biceps. Staying here, working a little bit on deep core strengthening, stamina for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Knees come on down, come on out, working our way back into downward facing dog, coming through plank. Lifting up into down dog, stretching the heels down. Now press your 10 fingertips into the mat and feel as if you're going to push the front of your mat away a little bit. Take one more deep breath here. Bend your knees and practice taking one step up with each foot. Forward fold. And whatever space there is between fingertips and feet, just walk your hands back. Take your hands to your calf muscles, bend your knees to settle the rib cage onto the thigh bones, drop the crown of the head, and press the legs either a little bit straight-ish or straight, whatever works best for your hamstrings. You want to feel the tug in the belly of the hamstrings, not up at the origin site. And then hands to hips, come on up to standing. And once more, yogis, Let's come into Tadasana together. So feet comfortably underneath the hips. Shoulders roll back. The muscles of the legs hug the bones. The abdominal wall pulls in. The skull lifts. And notice how that gentle upward pull of the skull enhances the openness of your throat. And when you're ready, softly open your eyes. Inhale, lift. And exhale, bring yourself out into wide-legged stance on your mat. Lift and spread the toes. Lift the inner arches. Let the toes touch down softly as the arms extend. See if you can hug the muscles of the legs to the bones. Abdominal wall in. And now we're going to add the arms, strengthening the triceps by first lengthening and then pulling the triceps up to the arm bones. Inhale, lift. Exhale, release with palms towards the earth. And then turn the right toes to the back of the room and bend your knee. Inchworm around until you find your shoulders over your hips. Arms are expressing length and strength. And you can feel the heels and the outer edges of your arms, uh, pardon me, your feet. The heels and the outer edges of your feet connecting. And then as you inhale, swing back. As you exhale, dial forward. Inhale, we swing back together. Exhale, we glide forward together. Inhale, dial back. And exhale, glide forward. Now again, Connecting to the heels, the outer edges of the feet, sweep your un underneath arm, this right arm out, and lengthen. Get nice and long here, and then press into the feet and cartwheel up into exalted warrior. Now here's a chance to really deepen your connection down into the earth, 
Roll the shoulders back and lift and open. Let the head roll back. As you exhale, come into Fearless Warrior, Warrior Two. Now we're gonna work from the feet, strong connection to the earth. Heart lifts and opens, strong connection to each other. And then extend your arms, look over your front fingertips, Fearless Warrior, bring to mind something you would like to be fearless about. And let your mind, body, and spirit experience fearless for one full cleansing breath. And then the hands can come down. We're going to turn the toes, do everything on the opposite side. Inhale, we lift up together. Exhale, we express length and openness together letting that sense of courage bubble up and open the heart. Left toes turn back, bend the knee, settle in. Now as you have your arms long and strong, pull the triceps up toward your arm bones. Get everything engaged from the waist down, really supporting yourself here in this posture. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, come into fearless warrior and expand. Notice once more, heels and outer edges of feet on the mat. Inhale, reach back, and exhale, glide forward. Inhale, swing back. Exhale, we glide forward together. Inhale, swing back. And exhale, sweep forward. If your toes are beginning to scrunch a little bit, attempting to hold you in place with balance, release them so you can really work on the strengthening of all the little muscle groups around the joints. Swing the bottom arm out, expand, extend. Lift and lengthen, and then press into the heels, press into the feet, exalted warrior, and again, such a great posture for combining descending, connecting energy and lifting, opening energy. So deep sense of connection helps us lift and open with courage. Lift and lengthen. You can let a little bit of the weight of your skull roll back. And then release into fearless warrior. Arms expand. Imagine that each arm is growing about an inch and a half in length. And the heart is so open and supported. Gaze over the front fingertips. Fearless warrior, bring to mind something you would like to be fearless about, and let your mind, body, and spirit experience that for a full round of breath. Arms come down, turn the toes. Here we go, yogis, we lift up together. We lift, lengthen, and open. Exhale, deep bow to our shared practice. Inhale, we lift up halfway, sitting back in the heels. Exhale, belly button up as you bow. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up. Exhale to your heart center. And release your hands, step your feet in. If you have a block, if you'd like to use one for triangle, that's where we're headed, please feel free to grab it. You can start with it behind your right heel. We're coming back into wide-legged stance. If you don't have a block, that's fine. You'll be able to do this practice just as efficiently and with just as much opening. Sometimes it just feels good to have these props to move around and have a few options with. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, expand. Again, pull the triceps up to the arm bones and see if you can do that as you relax the shoulders. Palms open, right toes turn. We're going to keep the legs straight here, so pull the energy of your connection to the earth right up through your feet and legs up to your solar plexus. And once more, holding it there, exalted warrior, roll the shoulders back, lift and open the heart, and then exhale, arms straight out from heart center, keeping the energy of Padabandha pulling right up into your solar plexus. Sweep your right arm forward, 
and then eventually down to your shin, your mat, or your brick. Whatever feels like it brings you into a nice alignment. So sometimes we think about, oh, I really need to get low, low, low in the pose. And sometimes that can feel good. But sometimes a little extra lift can feel good too. So just notice what feels good to you this morning. Put yourself back into your heels a little bit. Just a gentle pressure of the outer edges of the feet on the mat. And the left arm sweeps straight up. And now let the head roll back. See if you can pull very gently your top hip back a little bit, really working on the engagement of the whole anatomy train of the legs right up into the hips. One more deep cleansing breath here. And then when that breath is complete, left hand to hip. Look down, bend your knee, swing on up. We're gonna do the other side. Brick behind the left heel if you're using one. And don't be surprised if you need to make a little bit of adjustment between, because our two sides are not exactly symmetrical. So starting with the foundation, rooting down into the earth, lifting up towards the sky, this big band of energy that we are between earth and sky. And then you're gonna extend out, pull the energy of Padabanda, your connection to the earth, pull it right up into your solar plexus, lift and open your heart, your throat, your hands. And then turn the left toes forward, keeping the legs straight, you're going to sweep into exalted warrior. A little bit of the crown of the head and the, just the pure weight of the skull goes back. Let it lift and open you. If you need to take this arm over and out for more heart space, go right ahead. And release. Palms shining open. Heart lifted and open. Pull the energy from the earth right up into your solar plexus. Keep strong as we go, yogis. Keep the strength there, moving the left side body forward, eventually down to shin, to mat, to brick, whatever works for you. Getting strong as you lengthen and open. Getting strong as you open. Right arm sweeps up. Maybe you take a little bit of the weight of your skull back. Now, again, drop your aware awareness down into that right hip. Try pulling it back a little bit. You're going to really need to engage the leg muscles here to do that. Pull it back. Let the heart maybe open a little bit more. And then take your right hand to your hip. Look down. Bend your knee. And come on up to standing. Turn the toes. Step the feet together. If you've been using a brick, you can put it aside. Inhale, lift. Exhale, deep bow. Crab walk up or down your mat, coming into plank pose. Inhale, plank, and exhale, knees up or down as you lower. Inhale, sweep up, Bhujangasana pose as you let the shoulders roll away from the ears. Exhale, roll over your toes, and inhale up into downward facing dog. Inhale into plank with your knees up or down. Inhale in plank. Exhale to lower. Inhale, sweep up into Bhujangasana. Shoulders roll away from the ears. Lift and open. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, swing into plank. Knees up or down. Exhale to lower. Inhale to sweep up. And exhale, downward facing dog. Now drop your knees down to the mat. And if you'd like to use a blanket, we're gonna do a, a lunge. Get a blanket or a pillow for your knees, whatever would feel good to you. If you don't need one, that's fine. We're gonna come up onto standing on our knees and then keeping the back toes tucked under. Step the left foot forward for lunge. We're going to come into Anjane Asana. And when we do Anjane Asana, we want some room between the hips and the front heel. So nice big stance here. Inhale, lift. Exhale, release the shoulders. Inhale to lift and open your heart. Exhale, 
drop the hips forward. You can stay right here. You could take your arms a little wider if that helps your shoulders release. You could take a more traditional approach and steeple your fingers if that feels good. If you can do that and release in the shoulders, whatever feels good to you. You can explore a little bit and then come to some stillness here. Let a bit of the weight of the head roll back. Keep the heart lifted and open. And then hands to heart center. We'll do the other side. So just keep taking care with balance. Step the left foot back and bring the right foot forward. And make sure you have enough space to move in Anjani Asana. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, release the shoulders. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, drop the hips. And then just notice what feels good. Arms straight up from the shoulder complex, maybe a little bit wide for extra descending and releasing of tension in the shoulders, or maybe in a very ancient traditional approach, steepling the fingers, but still trying to let go in the tops of the shoulders. Relax the jaw here. Lift and open. And release. And let's come out into plank pose. We're going to come up into standing. So get nice and long in your plank. Practice pulling the big muscle groups to the bones. Lift up. This time what I'd like you to do is bend your knees and simply step to the center of your mat and then walk your hands back. You can capture opposite elbow here and give yourself a bit of movement side to side. Belly button is up. Weight is shifted towards the heels just a little bit. Head hangs. And then hands to hips. Point your elbows up at the ceiling. Reach back into your heels to push yourself on up. We're gonna take Eagle pose, and I'll bring the brick around so that if any of you are using a brick and you want to work on eagle pose with a prop, you could do that this morning. You're going to just simply choose one leg to balance on, and then you could put the brick beside you if you wanted. You can, in eagle pose, you can do heel, uh, toe up, toe down. This is what you might want the brick for. It's very, really grounding. Right? You, don't, you won't feel very wobbly if you have the brick. If you want to work on swinging your um, leg all the way around, do that. And when you're ready, find a little speck for your drishti, your gaze, and get strong in that standing leg as you let your heart lift and open and release. We're going to do the other side. If you want to use the brick, bring it around. Ground down into your foot. Swing your foot over to the brick, or just have it lifted, or wrap it around the standing leg. And then you're going to lift your arms and release. Good. You put the brick aside if you were using it. Inhale, lift. Exhale, bow. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, back into plank pose. Knees up or down as you inhale. Exhale, lower. Inhale, sweep up. Bhujangasana. Now, hug your elbows into your side body. Press your ten fingertips down. Pull back isometrically to lift and open the heart. And exhale, child's pose. Sink back at the hips. Head comes down. If you'd like, you can swing your palms open to the sky and really relax the shoulders here. Either one. If you're enjoying that lengthening of the arms and arms are extended in front of you, try lifting up onto your fingertips and peeling your armpits out to the side. And then come back. We're coming up into more standing poses. So lift up into plank pose. Lift up into downward facing dog. Bend your knees. And once more, practice taking one big step up. Whatever space is between your hands and your fingertips, walk your hands back onto your shins or onto the mat beside your feet. Hands to hips, come on up to standing. We're going to work a little bit on warrior one this morning. So keeping your right foot forward, step your left foot back. 
turn the toes about halfway out. And if you feel a little wobbly doing this, inchworm your forward foot off to the side of your mat a little bit. Hands to hips. Pull that right hip back. Send the left hip forward. Bend your knee. And remember, you can always inchworm around a little bit. We want to create a lot of space here. Also, we want to feel safe. So just explore where to go so that the knee doesn't end up in front of the ankle joint, just right there over the ankle. And then again, the right hip is working back, the left hip is working forward, and sometimes the challenge is to keep that left heel on the mat. When you're ready, once more, lift and open the heart, the lungs, the hands. Lift your gaze, warrior one. Warrior one in yoga philosophy symbolizes showing up in life. And this is a way of building stamina too. Stamina, stamina for continuing to show up, keeping ourselves, our loved ones, and our community healthy. Lifting, showing up. Showing up for yourself, showing up for others. And then take the hands behind you to interlace. Again, if you feel like you're scrunching your toes, try to release that and rely on the strength of your heels and the outer edges of your feet. And then draw the knuckles back to lift and open the heart as you exhale, forward fold. Letting the crown of the head drop down, moving the arms skyward. And then press on up release the fingers and step up. We're going to do the other side. So left foot stays forward, right foot steps way back. Again, move around the mat a little bit till you feel solid. You're supporting yourself, getting very strong in a way that lifts and opens you. And again, we don't want the knee in front of the ankle, and that might mean that you inchworm the back foot back a little bit. And then we're going to rotate the hips, so we can really get this anatomy trained on the back of the leg working. We can get strong in the core. Left hip back, right hip forward. Relax the shoulders. Try to keep the arms straight as you lift, keeping the back heel down. Lifting and opening the throat, lifting the gaze. Letting the heart blossom with courage. Letting the Legs and hips and core get strong to encourage that, right? This is the whole mind, body, spirit connection. Showing up for yourself, showing up with, for others. Building stamina. With your next exhale, interlace your hands behind you. Take your knuckles back. Get long, get strong. Exhale, deep bow, humble warrior, bowing towards the earth. Bowing towards the earth, this uh, physical symbol of bowing, letting go. In yoga we say surrender, graceful surrender. Press into the heels, come back up, straighten that right leg up, pardon me, the left leg a little bit, and step on up. Inhale, lift. Exhale, bow. Inhale, lift up halfway. And exhale, bend the knees to step back into plank pose. Inhale, plank with your knees up or down. With your next exhale, try a nice slow lower. Inhale, sweep up, Ujjangasana pose. And exhale, come all the way down. Make a little pillow for your forehead with your arms, and you're going to lay your forehead right there, bend your knees, and let your, your feet windshield wiper side to side, and come back to center, bring your hands behind you like we did in Warrior One, lift and lengthen. If you feel like you have a little energy to give to the posture, you can lengthen and lift your legs. You're lifting your head, your heart, your hands, and maybe your legs, too. Find a little gaze for your drishti out on the floor, a couple feet in front of you, 
and push your toes back so you can stay long and strong here. And release. So you could do this again, the windshield wipery, or if you feel like you need to give your low back a little extra stretch, try child's pose. If you want to work on the strength of your upper body, then come into downward facing dog. Pick a posture that's going to lengthen the low back and just check in with yourself. Just check in to see how that low back is doing. We don't need to underdo, we don't need to overdo, so just Notice, 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 right? How's the low back doing? Does it need to go a little less deeply into back bends? Or are you up for some more deep back bends? When you're ready, you're going to come out of your posture and either lift or lower down. So if what we just did felt perfectly good and healthy to your spine, you can take it to a deeper level of bending the knees and reaching back for the ankles. But if it didn't feel, if it felt a little too deep, then I would suggest taking a posture where you have your arms out and lift. Maybe lift up the legs, maybe not. So either that or hold the ankles, flexing the ankles, roll the shoulders back and lift the leg bones, stay right here, or push back with your shin so that the heart and the head lift. And release. Push back into rabbit pose. So we're going to take the knees and the inner edges of the feet together. Walk back. If you can sit on your heels, great. If that's too intense for your knees, you can lift up for a moment. And then we're going to roll over our thigh bones. Palms are cupped open to the sky. Head down. Relax the shoulders. And then lift the hips up. Roll onto the crown of the head just a little bit for traction in the spine. And sit back down on your heels. And then come on up for a moment, tucking the toes under. Sit down on the heels. So a lot of us have been walking and jogging a lot, so it's going to really show up in the feet. And it's a nice way to Strengthen and lengthen the soles of the feet, all the tendons and ligaments there, and all the muscles. Okay, yogis, come on up, lift the hips if they were down. What we're going to do is a little, uh, one final back bend. It's not designed to be the deepest back bend of your morning, so take it in a way that just feels like it lifts and opens you without demanding anything from the low back. Hug the muscles of the legs onto the bones. Roll the shoulders back. And once you are there, pull the abdominal wall in, in service to lifting and opening the heart. So creating a lot of strength here so that we can lift and open the heart. Put your hands either in your back pockets, letting the shoulders come towards each other, or reach back. Hands to heels. Lift and open. If you have your hands at your heels and you're hugging in the muscles of the legs and the core, you're going to need to also move the hips forward a little bit as you lift and open. On an inhale, come on up. Try once again to sit on the heels. And come on up. Walk your knees up towards your wrists. Cross at your ankles. You're going to come right down onto your back body. It's a good time to uh, make sure you have your brick and your blanket kind of handy, but not in your way. Lie down on your mat. Lift the left leg straight up. Interlace behind. You can slide your hands up. Just do this in a way that just feels good to you. It might feel good to roll your ankle, letting nose and knee come toward each other. And then foot down, lift up again. Interlaced hands somewhere behind the leg that feels good. If you feel like rolling your ankle, go ahead and release. 
Hug your knees in. Take your nose towards your knees. And then take your left foot down the mat. Push through the heel. Left hand to right knee. Draw the knee across midline. Stretch this right arm way back behind you. And let the left heel push forward as the right arm reaches back. Getting long, right? Feel a real lengthening between your bottom rib and the top of your hip. And release. We're going to do the other side. Right heel pushes forward. Left leg surrenders. Draws across. Left fingertips reach way back. See, it can feel very stretchy in this pose. And release. Once more, this time, fingertips under the knee joint, bending the knees, lift the head, and you're going to swing on up, like you're on a swing set. Swing on up. Take a hold of your blanket. Just have it right next to you. And you're going to press your heels forward, lifting your heart. Roll your shoulders back. Put your hands down, pull your abdominal wall in. So the key here in this pose, Dandasana, is this combination of pressing forward with the heels and lifting up into the solar complex, solar plexus, and rolling the shoulders back. Close your eyes. When you're ready, release on an exhale and take your blanket, your folded blanket if you're using one. And I would suggest we're going to do a wide legged seated posture. When we do the blanket, we get the most out of it by not sitting back on the blanket like it's a seat, but sitting right up at the front fold. So you can, if you have your hands at your hips and you're using a blanket or a pillow, you can feel the hips roll forward. And that's going to create that nice little low back curve that's really important when we do these seated postures. We don't want to flatten the low back curve. So let that be just gently and slightly enhanced. Press the heels away from you. Again, abdomen pulls in. Arms lift, relax the shoulders. So press out through the heels, lift up through your fingertips. Maybe lift your gaze. Keep pressing out through the heels, keep lifting up through the arms. As you exhale, sweep arm down. If you feel like going nice and low, do that. But do keep expressing energy out the heels. And come on up. You're going to put the blanket aside for later. Take your brick overhead if you're using one this morning. Swing on down. Let your arms come straight up overhead. And then as you exhale, begin bending the elbows until you feel a deep release behind the shoulder blades and pause there. Release the abdominal wall so your belly can move fully with each cleansing breath. Keeping your knees together, bring the feet over towards the edges of the mat until you feel a very gentle tug at the outer ed edges of your thigh bones and hip complex. Close your eyes here. Here we go, beginning to let the practice sink into the muscle fibers of the body and even receiving the yoga practice on a cellular level. And then walk your feet back in. This time, touch the soles of your feet together, knees off to the sides. 
let the leg bones be heavy. If at any point this feels too intense, like the weight of your legs is just pulling too much on the muscles, then just bring the feet back up for a moment or two. Otherwise, you can let the weight of the legs deepen the posture. Just be sure you're not overdoing it. Close your eyes. Let the throat be open. Take your awareness up into what we call the third eye, the space in the center of your forehead. And allow for a softening there. Release clenching, release tightness. Strengthening, strengthening the bond of body, mind, and spirit allows us to open on a deeper level. And then bring your legs to touch, keeping your arms just as they are, if it still feels super comfortable, or making a slight adjustment if necessary. Bring your knees over to the left, leave your shoulder blades on your mat. Just let the knees fall to the left. And you're going to imagine that as you inhale, you're lifting and inflating your right hip. And as you exhale, you're letting your knees and your leg bones deepen their connection to the earth. So inhales, lift and fill that top hip. And exhales, help the weight of the legs descend and connect. When you're ready, come back to center so that you can do the same thing on the other side. Start with your head and your feet at the center of the mat and then keeping stillness from the rib cage all the way up to the crown of the head. Let the knees fall to the right. And again, working with our breathing, inhale to inflate the top hip, let it feel lifted. Exhale, the leg bones descend more deeply towards the earth. Strengthening our connection, strengthening our awareness of our own self, our own body, mind, and spirit. That beautiful paradox in yoga. and then come back to center. If you have a brick and you'd like to use it, you're gonna bring it down so that when you lift your hips, you can place the brick behind your hips and take a nice, long, full body stretch over your brick. If you'd like a little extra stretchiness, interlace your fingers and pivot your palms towards the back of the room. You can close your eyes here Again, letting things just sink into the body. We get a lot of strengthening postures. So let the muscle fibers of the body receive. And when the time feels right to you, you can draw your arms down, palms open to the sky, bend your knees and lift your legs straight up towards the sky. And you'll stay here for as long a time or as little a time as you'd like. When you feel like you've had enough of this legs up posture, you're simply gonna bend your knees, put your feet down, take the brick out, and come into Shavasana, maybe covering yourself with your blanket. While you're in this uh, inversion, just let the arms get really heavy. Let the palms of your hands and your fingers get really heavy. Let your skull just sit on the earth, supported. And let your brain simply sit at the back of your skull. Stay here just as long as you would like, getting the benefits of this inversion. And then when the time is right, working your way into Shavasana. As you lie here in Shavasana, absorbing your practice, I'm going to ring the Tibetan bowl three times. And 
you're going to stay with your yoga practice as long as you'd like, staying in Shavasana just as long as you would like. Thank you, yogis. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you walk through your day with strength and ease. The light in me shines on and honors the beautiful light in you. Namaste.